Hello 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 everyone. When it comes to choosing a TV when we go to the store we look at basic things like the inches we want, or the resolution we are looking for, HD, Full HD, 4K, 8K, I don't know, whatever we are looking for. But when we get to the store we see that there are different lighting technologies within each brand and they seem to be different from each other. What does each technology mean? What are the differences? Which one is more convenient for me? Which one is better? If you have these doubts stay tuned to the video because today we are going to see how LED, OLED and QLED technologies differ. I will try to give a practical and simple theory using the least amount of technicalities possible, that is, I will explain it as I would like it to be explained to me. As you can see, there are three main types of different lighting technologies in televisions, LED, OLED and QLED. Well, there are some more like for example the micro LED, but they are not so commercialized. So let's discuss these three groups that are the main ones we find if we go to a store right now. Before we start, we must know that what differentiates each of the technologies is the way in which the pixels or color dots are illuminated, that is, how the image we see is built or formed. We start with the most commercialized and basic technology, which is the LED or light emitting diode. This technology can be found in all brands of televisions, LG, Samsung, Sony, Hisense, Philips, well, all of them. LED TVs are the cheapest and most common of these three groups. If we go to a store, most of the TVs we will see will be LED and if we want something cheap it will also be LED. To get the image on LED TVs, a layer of white LED diodes is placed on the back of the screen or in some models also on the side, which illuminate from behind the color pixels located a few layers in front, that is, by means of a white light illuminate the colors from back to front and get the full palette. To give you an idea, between the central layers between the white diodes and the color pixels there are hundreds of tiny doors that open and close all at once. With greater or lesser opening, to get the colors shown on TV, that is, it acts as a filter between the layer of white diodes and the layer of color pixels. Here we have to know something important and that is that all the colors that we see, including black, are going to be obtained in a way, between quotation marks, artificial. That is, I explain, the rear white LEDs are never turned off, they are always on to show us the colors of the image, so the black color, which is the case that interests us most, to get it does it through that back light which is why, and what I want to get, is that we will never ever get a pure and real black as if it were the darkness, since we will always have, however black it is, that grayish tone that comes out due to the lighting coming from the rear panel. We continue with OLED technology, or organic light emitting diode. This technology can be found concentrated in the LG and Sony brands. There are some others out there, but it mainly moves between these two. OLED TVs are the most expensive of these three groups, but they are also the ones that provide the most realistic colors. To get the image we see, OLED TVs no longer need to place white diode panels on the back as in the LEDs, but only one panel is needed to emit all the colors it produces, since what we have here are organic LEDs, which operate independently and are able to turn on or off individually when they receive electric current, without the need for a backlight source. The turning off thing is very important, because as we've said before, the pixels in LED TVs never turn off, and here they do. This gives us something we don't get in any other TV, pure blacks. What more realistic black can you get than turning something off and leaving the blackness? Well, none. In this case, to get the black, each of the LEDs involved in the process are turned off, they do not emit any light, so we will see a deep black and totally real. This means that, by saving the back layer of diodes and those that act as filters, OLEDs will give us thinner TVs and much slimmer panels. We also get a total viewing angle, and no matter where we look at the TV we will see it without problem, since each pixel is illuminated independently. The light is emitted equally in all directions, which in LEDs, having the rear panel of light emitting, cannot happen, and we will always have some angle where the illumination is lost and we do not see it well at all. Another advantage over LEDs is that the latter, to generate the white color, need to have on in each pixel the three sub-pixels at the same time, red, green and blue, and thus make the mixture, while OLEDs have a special white sub-pixel, which emits that color by itself, so apart from getting a very good white color. We will get an energy saving by having only one sub-pixel on instead of three. 
On the other hand, we have a couple of disadvantages. First of all, panel burn-in. First of all, say that this problem is much more controlled in OLEDs since 2017. So it is not a very relevant problem today, but it must be said since it could happen. For you to understand it quickly, imagine that in your house you watch a particular TV channel a lot, and you have the same channel on all day long. The TV channels have the logo visible at all times and static in one of the corners of the screen. Well, what happens? Because they are organic LEDs, they have life, and are, in quotation marks, prone to burn out if they are many hours showing the same thing without variations. What does this mean? If you always see the same thing and that mark stays there for hours and hours, when you change channels, you will continue to see that logo in the same place in a grayish form. In other words, those LEDs will have burned out. There are TVs that have recovery systems and after a while it regenerates, but if the exposure is very prolonged, the burn can be lifelong. Although, I emphasize again, this is very advanced since 2017, and today it happens much less frequently. And the second disadvantage is that OLED TVs, being made up of organic LEDs, and therefore alive, have a much shorter life than LEDs or CLEDs, and are losing efficiency faster. And we finish with the QLED technology, or quantum light emitting diode. This technology can be found mainly in the Samsung brand and some Hisense. There are a few others out there, but not many. QLED TVs are not the most expensive of these three groups, but they are not the cheapest either. To get the image on QLED TVs is the same as LED but with a small variation. The structure is the same, placing on the back of the screen a layer of white LEDs to illuminate from behind the colored pixels in front. But they have a small difference and in this case the color filter is not made with those shutters that open and close at the same time as in the LEDs, but are replaced by tiny particles called quantum dots that react to light generating a specific color individually. Thanks to this, each pixel will be able to behave independently, so you can get much more vivid, accurate and intense colors, although sometimes we can even see them a little saturated and unrealistic. As they are still not turned off, we will not get the pure black of an LED, but it is the closest we will get to it, by working each quantum dot of each pixel individually. In fact, there are current models that almost perfectly mimic OLED black, with very satisfactory results. Technologies have also been introduced to avoid reflections and correct the LED's deficiency in viewing angles, so that the light is emitted straight on and not scattered to the sides. Even with improvements, it is very difficult for any technology to reach the viewing angle efficiency of an OLED. On the other hand, we do not have the problem of burning in any case, being LEDs and not organic elements, so we get a very decent color level without that risk. In short, to the question which of the technologies is better, the answer is all of them and none of them. It depends on each of us and our needs, as each has its advantages and disadvantages. From my point of view, for example, if you are a basic user who wants to watch TV sporadically and play the play sometime with friends, an LED is what will suit you best and the most convenient, something economical, with good lighting and durable. If you like to watch TV alone, front on, enjoy the strong colors, brightness, and also play the console regularly, go for a cooler, it will offer you the best visual experience in terms of brightness and colorimetry and is how, in my opinion, you will squeeze the best video games. And finally, if you watch TV as a family or are a movie buff who enjoys true colors and movies with real dark scenes, go for an OLED. Any member of the family will see it perfectly regardless of where they are sitting and you will enjoy the movies thanks to this contrast between the off and on pixels. Well, guys, I hope I have helped you with this video. If so, I appreciate that you leave me a nice like, which is totally free, that you subscribe and hit the little bell if you do not want to miss anything and that you share the video with anyone you think it can help. Also, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So nothing, guys, as always, a pleasure and until the next video.